So not even a day after Apple released iOS and iPadOS 16.2 to the entire public, they shot out and they gave us 16.3 beta 1 for iOS and iPadOS. So in this video, let's talk about what's new, what they could have improved, and if there's anything worth really talking about with 16.3 beta 1, because again, it is the first beta, so we should be getting some new features. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay everyone, let's get right into this video. And the first thing I do like to show off is exactly what this build number looks like for iOS and iPadOS 16.3 beta one. So if we go into our general, go into our about section, I'll bring it up here and I'll show you guys that we are on iOS 16.3 and the version number is 20D5024 lowercase e. So we should be getting updates, but I will say that normally this is Apple's final update of the holiday season. So we probably won't get beta two until next year, technically in early January. So if you do decide to update to iOS 16.3 beta one, just know that whatever bugs come with it, you'll be stuck with them for longer than usual. Because normally, after the first beta, Apple waits two weeks for the second beta, but this one will be at least three to four weeks, so keep that in mind. But that is the version number we're dealing with, and it's the same thing on the iPad over here. And then in terms of build size, on the iPad side, it was almost five gigabytes, and on the iOS side, I just didn't take a screenshot, but it should be roughly the same. So give yourself at least eight to 10 gigs of open storage in order to get this installed and get it installed correctly. Because the last thing you want is for it to freeze up when it is installing. So keep that in mind, about five gigs to get it installed on either one of these devices. And yes, I know it is a large update, so there should be a lot of features that come with it, but normally it's not too many feature updates and it's just the fact that it's a brand new beta. It has to reinstall and install pretty much a brand new iPadOS version, which is 16.3 and iOS version 16.3. So now in terms of what's new, the big new feature with 16.3 is all about security. So iOS 16.3 brings support for protecting your Apple ID with physical security keys. People have been using YubiKeys as a form of multi-factor authentication for a while. It runs either off a of USB or it runs off of an NFC tag as well. So basically, I'm gonna show you guys how it works, but you can now use a physical key for multi-factor authentication with your iCloud and iOS and iPadOS device. And then what's really nice about this is this little piece right here. So Apple told 9to5Mac that this security key system integrates with its device to device transfer process. So let's say you're using an iPhone 13 like I am or an iPhone 14 Pro Max, and then next year you get a brand new phone, that same key, as long as you keep your same iCloud, will then still work as a multi-factor authenticator with that new phone. So you don't need to repair it, you don't need to re-authenticate it or anything like that. And again, this is just another level of security that Apple already added with their advanced data protection for iCloud, which is basically end-to-end -end encryption for all iCloud services. Whereas right now, Apple only has end-to-end -end encryption for things stored in iCloud, such as health data and passwords. That's really the only thing aside from iMessage, but ideally Apple will begin to roll it out to things like photos, things like notes, anything that involves iCloud will have end-to-end -end encryption. So the way to get into this new version of multi-factor authentication with a physical key, go into your settings, go into your iCloud, then go to passwords and security. And then if you go into your settings and go to add security key, give it a second and then this is what pops up. So here's the prompt. So basically it says a FIDO certified security key is a third party hardware that you can use to verify your identity. Strongest account security because it relies on a physical asset to secure you. So unless you have that key, you cannot get into whatever you're trying to get into. So you can't get hacked with a password or anything like that. But it does require two security keys in order for this to happen. So one for actual use and one for redundancy because the last thing Apple wants is for you to set it up with one key, you physically lose it, and then you're kind of stuck in with a locked and bricked iPhone. So you just press add security key. I personally don't have one, but all you have to do is you tap it to the back of your phone where the NFC reader is, and you start going from there. So we'll press continue. And then it lets you know what you should sign out of. So these are all inactive accounts, which I don't use anymore. I don't even have those devices, but it lets you know like, hey, these devices aren't compatible with that. So just keep that in mind. But that is pretty much the process, and it seems very, very easy. I'm curious to know if they added it to the iPad. So if I go into settings, if we go into our iCloud, if we go into passwords and security, you do have the ability to add security keys on the iPad itself. So that's always great news. So now that we got that out of the way, another quick thing that I did notice is if you go into your Apple Music, you actually get a new splash screen, which is interesting because Apple came out with this new Apple Music Sing situation for iOS 16.2, but it looks like with iOS 16.3, it's kind of giving us a little bit more awareness of this new feature. So it says belt it, wrap it, sing it, and you can see that it lets you know how it's used and then you can find your song inside of there. So it looks like Apple is kind of like internally advertising it a little bit more to people, but again, only on 16.3 and not really 16.2. And then we also got a new splash screen, which I'll throw on the screen of Apple kind of teaching you with a splash screen of how to actually transfer music from your iPhone over to a HomePod. Because again, most people, I mean, if you're in this space, you were aware of that feature, but I guess not a lot of people knew that you could literally just start playing music on your iPhone 
and then tap your HomePod and it'll transfer that music over to the HomePod. So that is something new that did come. So it's just a splash screen. So again, more awareness. So the name of the game here is privacy, security, and then on top of that, awareness of new Apple features. But that's pretty much everything when it comes to what's new. The last thing I will mention is let's look into battery life and see how we've been doing on battery life. Again, I'm using a 13 Pro Max, which again, now at this point might be about 15 to 16 months old. And we're doing about six hours and 24 minutes of screen on time. So let's look on a day like Monday, eight and a half hours of screen on time on about 110% charge, it looks like. On a day right here, like last Tuesday, eight and a half hours of screen on time with 100% battery. So I'm getting, you know, anywhere from eight to nine hours of screen on time on a 15 to 16 month old device, which I'm all for. And just to show you guys real quick what my battery percentage is like, I'm at 91% battery health. And again, I'm always running betas. I'm always have this thing plugged in. I don't follow the best practices for battery health, but that's just something to be aware of. And I'm sure the 14 Pro Max could do even better. But that is everything new with 16.3 beta one. Let's finish up this video and get out of this view. So as you saw, Apple with 16.3, it looks like they're really going towards a security game with being able to use NFC enabled two-factor authentication in order to unlock your phone or use it during iCloud passwords or even use it when transferring from an old iPhone to a new iPhone. So I do welcome the new feature. I'm all about security. The more secure we can be with our devices, the better. So shout out Apple for including that and it should be out with 16.3 whenever it does release to the public. But outside of that, everything was pretty much as more like awareness to some features that came with 16.2. And then also what I'm still waiting for is three main things that Apple talked about earlier on. So one of them is Apple Music Classical, which is supposed to be a dedicated application for classical music, which we saw in the code early on in 16.0 betas and we're still not yet seeing it. But then there's also two other things that Apple actually mentioned themselves, like their high yield savings account and then Apple Pay Later, which they announced during WWDC. And still we haven't seen that at all either. Now 16.3, almost six months after WWDC. So. Those are some things to look out for as these betas start iterating, or maybe Apple's gonna wait till like 16.4 to really release that, we don't really know. But one more caveat that I will mention is, since this is kind of before the holiday season, this should be Apple's last beta update until January of next year. So you will be, if you do wanna to update to 16.3 beta one, and you are in the developer program, you will be stuck on that beta one for a solid two, three, maybe even four weeks. So whatever bugs come with it, you're gonna be dealing with those for a while. So keep that in mind if you do plan on putting it on your main device. But outside of that, it does seem pretty stable, but I will say if I wasn't making these videos to let you guys know what's coming and what's new, I probably wouldn't be updating to 16.3 beta one. But that's gonna do it everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the end. And if you wanna watch some more Mac OS, iPad OS, or iOS videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, I'm out of here.